What's up people we are back with more of Eden in the previous video We actually had a pretty good conversation with Maya and at the end of it she gave us some sort of little box And I'm really curious as to what is inside so yeah let's find out Maya wanted to walk around a little longer so I left her behind and headed home alone I was worried about Xion considering what had happened this afternoon It would be great if it was just Vertigo Hmm? On my way straight to Xion's room, I noticed the door to my own room was open. I was sure I closed it when I left. Suspicious, I walked in. Ah, I gasped a, li a little without meaning to, but managed to control myself before I made much of a sound. I pawned my bed in the corner of the room. Hmm. Xion was asleep, all curled up like a baby in the womb. Why is she sleeping here? I whispered in a low voice so she wouldn't hear. Xion had hated sleeping alone with an intense passion when we first arrived at the cottage. She apparently slept with Alicia every day when she lived at the research facility and I kept her close the entire time we were on the run. It seemed like she'd finally gotten used to sleeping alone recently too. What's going on? I doubted she would wake even if I picked her up and carried her, but that posed a problem in itself. It would be best if I just slept somewhere else. Maya was using a cot in the living room, so I guess I got the hallway. Ryo... Huh? Just as I was about to leave, I heard her voice. She was looking at me, still half asleep. Where did you go? Oh, just a little walk. With Maya? I guess. I was getting evasive for some reason. Leaving Xi'an alone in the middle of the night was indeed something I should repent for. How many times have I told you not to leave without telling me? I know. I'm sorry. No, I won't forgive you. <laughs> It was hard to tell from her tone whether she was half asleep or truly meant it. Ryo. Xion patted the bed beside her. I in instantly understood what she was hinting at. You must be kidding. I'll forgive you if you sleep with me. Ah. If you can't stand being alone no matter what, M Maya will be back shortly. I don't want Maya. It has to be you. Why? There are some things even I can't explain. Her eyes remain sleepy, but there was no hesitation in her words. Xian's request was pure, like a child begging her mother to read her a bedtime story. That bed's too cramped for two people. I'm tiny. It'll be fine. Xian. What are you thinking? I couldn't make this request if I were thinking. And then, Xi'an closed her eyes. I couldn't comprehend why things had turned out this way. And though I didn't understand, I was inclined to grant Xi'an's wishes. If she were lonely, I couldn't just leave her here. That may have had something to do with the item in my pocket that Maya had entrusted with me. What is it? Move over a little bit more. Mm. I laid down, trying to touch her as little as possible. Ryo. What? Good night. The bedsheet smelled of Xi'an's fragrance. A few days had since passed. The weather had gotten a bit sloppy, but Xion enjoyed staying indoors and talking to Maya. To quote Xion, Maya isn't all that intelligent, but she's interesting in that I can't tell what she's going to bring up next. So, unpredictability. Besides, I've never ta uh, spoken to a girl her age before. It would seem speaking with Maya was a breath of fresh air in its own way. By the time the weather improved, Maya's notebook was jam-packed cover to cover. Maya, it's about time for you to head back. 
Xion suddenly declared while we were sitting down for breakfast. Maya froze in place when she heard, with her scrambled eggs inches away from her mouth. <laughs> Is she telling her to just like, get the hell out of here? Huh? Yo, does it look like the weather will hold for a while? Yeah. It's never rained much in this season. Up until yesterday, it was a bit abnormal. So it seems. Xi'an said no more and focus, focused on her soup bowl as if to say the conversation was over. Of course, Maya wouldn't have it. Wait, Xi'an, what do you mean, head back? I mean, for you to return to your own home, to go and prepare to board the ships. I didn't mean it like that. Where's this coming from all of a sudden? Go home. <laughs> Her words were emotionless, yet had such intensity that they left no room for discussion. Maya was glaring at Xion, looking like she couldn't accept it, or wouldn't. You should leave by tomorrow. Ryo, escort her halfway. I don't mind taking her as far as the nearby town. I didn't say I was going back yet. If you don't, you'll die. Aww. She was at a loss for words. Still, everything Xian said was the truth. It was easy to tell that there was next to no time left until the final colony ship departed, even though there was no calendar or any uh, of any sort in the cottage. Keeping the distance to the spaceport in mind, she should be safe if she set out soon. But I haven't finished collecting information yet. You've collected plenty. I'm probably the only one who knows more about myself than you at this point. I still can't accept it. Maya, do you love Ryo or something? Do you not want to leave him? <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you talking about? Exactly as I said. I don't like repeating myself. Xi'an was utterly expressionless. She sipped away at her soup with her tiny mouth, little by little. It's got nothing to do with me liking him or not. I was joking. Hey, Xi'an! The go home part wasn't a joke. If you miss the ship, then everything I've told you will go to waste. You have to make sure you do your job. You don't seem to have realized that there's no time left. Or are you pretending you don't, so I'm telling you. Ultimately though, whether you stay or go, is your choice. Xion wasn't, wasn't tossing her out, she was simply being brutally honest and telling her the truth. Well, I do plan to go back, but this is just too sudden. Are you sure you plan to go back? You know you have to go back logically, but your desire not to is strong. Am I wrong? No, you could be right. Maya muttered feebly. Xion, why don't you leave it at that? Oh, it appears I'm the one bullying her this time. I wouldn't call it bullying, but I'm sure Mia, uh, Maya needs some time to mentally prepare herself too. I couldn't sense any emotion whatsoever in her eyes as she gazed at me. This was clearly a strange situation. There had been no mistake in what Xion said, and it was strange that I was uh, sticking up for Maya. I had no reason to do that. Maya didn't utter a single, single word after that until the meal was over, nor did she lift her head. Poor Mia, I have a feeling that she kinda wants to stay too actually. Her reasons for that, I don't know exactly. Maybe what Xion said jokingly was correct, but I don't know. When I finished working the fields and returned to the cottage, Xion was standing in the doorway. Her soft, rippling hair was uh, waving in the breeze. She was quite pic picturesque when she s just stood in place. Ryo, you're still up? She said she was a little sleepy today and hadn't come to the field with me. Yeah, I'm hungry. Wait just a bit. I'll prepare something right away. There was no need for her to purposely wait for me outside. Her actions were very cryptic at times. What about Mia? Oh, her. 
She had some un unfinished work to attend to, so she's staying at the fields a little longer. Heh <laughs> punishment. Is she sulking? Even she wouldn't do something that childish. Xion quickly brushed away the hair that had blown onto her cheeks. There's not much difference between human adults and children. They pout when something is boring and get surprised over the tiniest of things. Is that how it is for you too? I'm human? She asked with a mystified look on her face. That was a no-brainer. She may have been genetically modified and may have created things nobody else could have, but still, only a fool would ask something so obvious. A fool. Though her expression was relatively unfazed, she seemed to be moved. I haven't been called a fool in almost a hundred years. You're on a whole different scale here. I used to be told I was a fool, or that I was useless all the time when I was really little. It's nostalgic. The fact you poses that uh, those sorts of emotions is the proof you're human. Yeah. She smiled slightly and nodded. We're getting off topic. If you're referring to Maya, try not to say anything that'll drive her any further into a corner. She's no fool either. I'm sure she knows she can't stay here forever. It should be okay to wait until she accepts it on her own. Ryo, you've gotten so kind. I can see it on your face. It's because it doesn't really matter whether she stays or not. Liar. She said that with a sigh and turned around. She went back into the cottage, her long hair swaying behind her. I watched her go in silence and immediately walked in after her. Ultimately, Maya hadn't come back by the end of the afternoon. There was nothing I could do about it. I wrapped up her lunch of stir-fried vegetables and put them in the fridge and decided to head back to the fields. Xion said she felt sluggish from oversleeping and was reading a book in the living room. <laughs> Just, uh, I'm not saying that, that Xion is making excuses, but all of these reason, reasons for her to not do any work, like of course she's like physically not very capable of doing hard labor, but still, all of those reasons sound so silly when it's when it would be said by a person that, that is able to do that work, but just doesn't want to. Like for example, Yeah, I'm too sleepy, I cannot work now. And then you sleep, and then afterwards, like later in the day, you're like, Yeah, I don't. I feel a bit sluggish because I slept too much, so I can't work either. Like, you're because of your previous reasoning, you tried to fix that, and because of that, you created a new reason why you can't work again. It just feels a little silly. I guess she was finally tired of tending to the fields. Not that working the fields required her assistance. Maybe I should find her some other pastime. Just as I was thinking that over. Ah, you're late. Maya walked straight up to me, hanging her head and blushing for some reason. Are you finished weeding? Oh yeah, I'm done. In that case, go eat. There's stir-fried vegetables in the fridge. There's also rice, as usual, and an egg. You know... Maya looked up, her voice making me feel frantic somehow. Do you agree that I have to go back no matter what? Obviously. All alone? What are you trying to say? Maya shook her head and her ponytail swayed from side to side. I don't know either. No, I shouldn't say, uh, shouldn't say I don't because there's no time. She brooded over it with her hands against her temples. No matter how pressed for time she might be, surely she didn't have to come to a conclusion right here and now. Xian and I have been keeping you company all the time lately. That's because I want to talk to you too. Then sit. There's no need to rush. Sometimes even pointless conversations can teach you a thing or two. As I said that, I took a seat on the ground. 
The ground was still faintly warm from basking in the sunlight all day. Right here? Might as well. It's not like a car or anything will come through. This mountain belongs to you and Xion, huh? After living here for a while, you really lose any concept of possession. Maya sat down in front of me as I grinned. Still, you're definitely Xion's, Haruna. I like to think I'm not her property. I frowned on reflex. Would you like to become mine then? Sorry to be a spoil sport, but I've quit being a pet. Darn, she clicked her tongue, seeming genuinely disappointed. Hadn't she wanted to have a serious conversation? How's she on doing? Is she still asleep? No, right now she's relaxing and reading a book. She wasn't mad at me? She's not mad. It's more like she's concerned. I see. Maya smiled a little and turned her attention in the direction of the cottage. That look in her eyes. It's as if she wanted to cuddle up against Xion's side right this second. You seem to be quite interested in Xion. To tell you the truth, I always wondered if she could be a cold person. But that wasn't the case at all. She isn't just easy on the eyes, though she is a bit of an oddball. She's just a, just a typical cute girl. I wouldn't call her typical, but she's a girl, yeah. <laughs> I want to squeeze her tight and roll her around with her in my arms. She's not a stuffed animal. It was a joke. Don't glare at me like that. Well, the fact of the matter is that she's not of an age, uh, not an age where she should be called a girl either. Yeah, she a woman. At times it slipped even my mind, but Xion had lived many times longer than Maya. And in that long life, she managed to accomplish unbelievable feats. Yet all the same, Xion had not lost her purity. That seemed miraculous to me. I'm sure from Xion's point of view, I'm nothing more than a child myself. I bet. I may call myself a journalist, but I'm a total novice. Maya twirled the tip of her ponytail around her finger. My articles uh, are always a bit lacking. I don't really know my way around a camera, and I completely suck at haggling. I manage only through sheer z uh, zeal Zeal, ah, that's gotta be zeal. For whatever subject catches my interest, I'm like a kid. Making it all the way here by yourself is quite the achievement. Oh? Maya slanted her head and stared upwards at me. Those eyes filled with unalter uh, uh, unadulterated curiosity seemed inexplicably dazzling. Could it be you're praising me? I just said what was on my mind. I answered and turned away. Come to think of it, why did you decide to become a journalist? Eh? What's with that stupid response? Why? Well, because I wanted to know about the world. You told me that already. Was there some sort of catalyst? Catalyst? Maya looked down at the ground as she continued to twirl her hair around her finger. I hadn't meant for it to be such a deep question, so I was a bit put off at how seriously she took it. If you can't remember, that's fine. No, it's not that. It just occurred to me that I never told my uncle either. So there was a catalyst. Yeah, I got right to work immediately after. I started listening to others all the time but stopped talking about myself ever since. Maya took her finger away from her hair. Her mood mysteriously improved. Almost like she'd forgotten what Xion had told her this morning. Actually, it wasn't that big of a deal. The truth is, I was kidnapped about three years ago. What? That sounds like a pretty big deal to me. Kidnappings, confinement, assassinations, they all happen too frequently even in urban districts, until a while ago. I guess... She didn't have to say it. I was quite aware, 
the terrorists who opposed the Earth Evacuation Project had repeated confrontations with police forces creating a quasi-civil war as their influence gradually waned. They couldn't even acquire weapons or personnel to continue fighting. At which point, they promoted their cause by pulling off small-scale crimes such as kidnappings and assassinations. I wouldn't call assassination and kidnapping a small-scale crime, but okay. It was a sign of how desperate they had become. Uh, desperate I would call it that, yeah for sure. Uh, whenever there was a situation the police couldn't handle, the military special forces, GAT or GAT, was deployed to deal with it. They all put on their sunglasses. As a matter of fact, my father is a government official. You're supposed to be some sort of high class rich girl? Unbelievable. It's true. But I guess you're right. I've always been just some stupid kid who didn't listen to what her parents told her to do. Like people always say, once a brat, always a brat. Leave me alone. Well, setting that aside, my father was pretty high up in the political ladder and deeply involved in the Earth Evacuation Project, so he became a target for the terrorists. Three years ago? That was about when they reached the, uh, were reaching the end of their ropes. They were committing crimes everywhere, with no objectives nor goals in mind, practically throwing temper tantrums. As far as I knew, there were nearly no instances of anyone kidnapped being released unharmed. Hostages were put through a, a gamut of horrors and then had their tattered bodies dumped by the wayside like garbage. To some extent, I thought for sure I'd be killed. I was blindfolded and thrown onto the cold floor. Maya paused there. The terror she once felt must have come, uh, come rushing back to her. It may have been three years ago, but it was likely that she, uh, that before she was killed, a young woman like her would, would have been. But I was lucky. My father used his connections to persuade the military to move their best special forces units in action. Their best special forces? Are you telling me Ryo was part of that and actually rescued Maya? I don't know the unit's name or anything. Maybe its existence isn't known to the general public. It couldn't be, or so I'd like to think. There was no way I could remember every last uh, one of my missions in such detail. The special forces stormed in and I was saved in the nick of time. I understand that, but why did that make you want to be a journalist? Maya looked puzzled. I could understand if she had admired the special forces and wanted to enlist, or if she wanted to board the colony ships as soon as possible. But why, after facing such an ordeal, did she want to stay on this planet and become a journalist? Well, you see, something the terrorists said stuck with me. You mean their ten uh, tenants influenced you? No way! She shook her head sternly. I'd never trust the word of anyone who would kidnap an innocent girl. But you know what? I asked one of the kidnappers, Why are you doing this? An ill-advised question. Had this woman been the rash type ever since she was a kid? Looking back on it now, I agree. But oddly enough, the guy didn't get mad. She suddenly looked into the distance. There are people trying to take girls like you, so suited for the sunshine, into a cold, dark place called space. We started this battle to protect people, but now there's nothing worth protecting anymore. All we do now is hurt people. That man had a lonely look in his eyes when he said that. They were cruel terrorists, there's no mistaking that, but they were still human. Yes, the people I had killed were humans who felt the same way. Soldiers are finally able to point their guns at the enemy once they've completely forgotten that. It had slipped my mind until just this very second and I would likely never think about it ever again. Those criminals were hopeless fools, but I found the fact they had an entire different philosophy 
fascinating. So that's why... What, it, what is right? A pretty silly question, huh? She scratched her cheeks as she blushed, for whatever reason. The thoughts, messages, and values of all sorts of people. I want to convey them to people all over the world. What is right is something everyone decides for themselves, isn't it? Maybe I'm just not cut out to be a journalist. She smiled shyly and stuck out her tongue. I grinned wryly at her childish behavior and at the same time reassessed my opinion of Maya. She wasn't just an idiot who acted on Im impulse and did rash things without thinking. Actually, she may have been an idiot, but she discovered her true calling. What Xion had accomplished and what she has said, will you simply convey them to the people of the world? That's not for me to decide. In that case, what's your personal opinion? Huh? Me? Personally? She started to twirl her hair again. More importantly, she should probably do something about that restlessness of hers. However, this time she was acting more mystified than worried. That's obvious, isn't it? I respect the person who worked so hard to save mankind. A simple opinion. What? You told me to give my personal opinion. That's fine, isn't it? I won't say it's not. I grinned, stood, and wiped the dirt off my pants. I'm sure I sense some malice there. Maya stood up, grumbling to herself. But hey, hmm? Thanks for listening to me. She came right up to me with a smile on her face. I'm the one who asked. It's really been forever since I talked about myself. You always seem so disinterested in people. Maybe I'm happy because it was you that asked, Haruna. Keep it to yourself. I said that bluntly and began to walk away. Oh, going to the fields? I'll go with. You go eat. I said without looking back and quickly walked off. How utterly ridiculous. I couldn't believe I pried into someone's past. Was I beginning to change in some way as well? Alright, well we're gonna end the video here. There seems to be some, some really interesting slash weird dynamic going on between uh, Ryo and uh, Maya and then the Shion as well of course. like. It's hard to say that that either one of them like really likes each other, but it's it sort of feels that whatever um, Xion said was sort of right that Maya, uh, Maya might like uh, Ryo and Ryo, I don't know how he feels or how he thinks whatsoever because he was sort of like a former basically killing machine, right? Basically didn't listen or care about his own feelings and just kind of ignore that or just pushed it aside or whatever so simply the fact that he's changing solely because of Maya being here I mean sure Xion had an impact on him changing as well but it had always for Rio it always has been he still always had this nagging feeling that he had to protect Xion so always be on guard whereas with Maya it just sort of feels different like he can kind of be not the person that he was all this time while he was with the army but just like a normal regular human being so i'm not sure how this is going to develop and into what exactly and how that's going to complicate things with xion if it is even going to or whatever the hell is going to happen of course but i just i just have a feeling that some interesting things are going to happen in the upcoming videos i'm not sure if it's going to be the next or like somewhere in the next three or four but there's definitely something on the horizon. But yeah, I'm gonna end the video here. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.